Welcome to this video in the search for better health topic. This video will be looking at dot point 9.4.11. Discuss the difficulties of defining the terms health and disease. So if I was to ask you to talk to me about these five images, you would be able to tell me that each one of them doesn't look quite right. So we can see that the child at the top here has very red eyes. His eyes are also watery and he looks quite distressed. This child up the top on the right is suffering from some kind of illness. In this case, he's suffering from measles. Down here, we have an image of a child who is suffering from malnutrition. So we can see that his bones are very visible. He's got a very low body weight. His facial features looked, look quite gaunt. And then in the middle, we have a man who is obese. He uh, has an excessive amount of body fat around the middle of his um, stomach he's obviously weighs more than he should and then lastly the last image there that man looks like he has man flu so he's got the red nose the bloodshot eyes he's got a thermometer in his mouth and a hot water bottle so from looking at these images it's really easy for us to be able to see that these five people are suffering from some kind of disease now what if i say to you have a look at these five people here now, it's a little bit different. We've got a, an elderly woman up the top here. She looks very happy. She looks healthy. She's eating a good meal. In the middle, we have a, an Asian man in a business suit. Looks like he's going to work. He looks very healthy. looks in a healthy body range. In the top corner, we have a, um, a man who's in cycling gear. He's got a big smile on his face. His skin looks healthy. Down the bottom, we have a little boy who's hugging a dog. And then the last image there, we have a man on a computer. Now, each of these images, though, hold something behind them. So this woman, this man, sorry, down here in the corner that's on his laptop, we can see he's confined to a wheelchair, so he's lost the use of his legs. Up in the top corner, our cyclist actually suffers from a genetic condition called hemophilia. So if you were to, or if he was, sorry, to be injured, his blood isn't able to clot as easily as those people who don't have hemophilia. Our old lady up in the top corner here, she looks outwardly very healthy. However, she suffers from Alzheimer's, which is a degenerative disorder of the brain, which causes people to lose um, memory very easily. So they can forget people, forget how to carry out simple daily, everyday functions. This little boy down in the bottom corner here actually suffers from a disease called cystic fibrosis, which causes excess mucus to be caused uh, to created to be created sorry in his lungs, which makes it very difficult for him to breathe. Now, the reason why I included the man, the Asian man up the top in the business suit, is that uh, people in Japan, especially males that are working in the corporate sector, have the highest one of the highest rates of depression stroke and suicide in the world simply because of all the demands that are placed on them in the workforce. So when we think back to the five images on the previous slide, they're very easy to see that something is wrong with each of those five individuals. However, at first glance, when we look at these five individuals on this slide, it's very difficult to tell that there's actually anything wrong with them. So why is it so hard to define health? So health is relative. Each person, their health is relative to how they were feeling the day before, how they were feeling the week before. It's relative to the people around you. It's also perspective, okay? So uh, some people have really good positive mental outlook. So if they're feeling a little bit unwell, they don't really let it get to them. They try to move on and keep going with their daily lives. And perception. So some people have a very low pain threshold versus other people that have a very high pain threshold. So this term health can be really hard to pinpoint a definition for, but here we have it here. So what is health? Health is usually defined with respect to our physical, mental, and social well-being, in which body functions are normal. So when our body is functioning in all of those three aspects at our normal level, then we are considered to be healthy. But you know, we always hear in society, what does normal mean? So health can vary on a daily basis. You can wake up one day and be feeling great. You had a good night's sleep. You ate a good dinner the night before. You wake up the next morning feeling fresh and vibrant. However, the next night you have an assignment due. 
So you're up till midnight, you're surviving on caffeine and you're feeling pretty rubbish. Okay. So health is more than just the absence of disease. So you, you may feel down, run down and things, but you're not necessarily diseased. The standards for health vary with age. So obviously somebody of your age is going to be viewed differently in terms of health as opposed to somebody in their 60s and 70s. And also it varies with the susceptibility to disease. So whether you are more susceptible to disease because of your immune system. So that can also change as well. So health is also subjective. So it depends on whether you're a physically, physically active person whether you're sensitive to health, uh, sorry, <laughs> sensitive to pain, your happiness level, so whether you, as I said before, are a usually very happy person, and your work ethic. So all of these different things all interrelate to determine whether somebody is healthy or not. So if we look at what is health, we can also look at what is disease. So disease is defined as any condition that adversely, adversely affects the functioning of an organism. So it may be an individual limb such as or organ such as the man that we saw in the wheelchair in the previous slide so that condition is affecting the functioning of the organism so he is no longer able to use his legs so therefore even though he may feel perfectly fine perfectly fit in other aspects that disease is causing that part of his body not to function properly so the definition is very broad and can cover minor conditions such as cutting yourself through to more obvious diseases like we saw on those slides like measles, conjunctivitis, uh, obesity, malnutrition. Uh, and it is possible for a healthy person to have a disease if he or she is able to manage it like our Alzheimer's, our haemophilia, our cystic fibrosis that we saw as well. They can lead very normal and healthy lives with this disease still sort of um, taking over part of their body by going through the correct management and treatment strategies. And in women, pregnancy can adversely affect the functioning of the mother's body. So things like weight gain, which um, obviously there's a, a human growing inside of her, high blood pressure in the third trimester, uh, nausea, tiredness, etc., but we don't necessarily call disease, uh, pregnancy a disease. So it affects the functioning of the body. However, we don't actually cause it a disease, call it a disease. So that's why defining health and disease can be really difficult because everybody's idea of health and disease is completely different based on a whole range of different factors. But as long as you remember that the definition of disease is, as we said in this slide, uh, the physical, mental and social well-being where your body functions are normal and that the definition of disease is any condition that adversely affects the functioning of an organism, then you've met the requirements of this dot point. And that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching.